when I was doing my master's to do the research on, on the impact of the Moors, my question was as follows. I'd heard a lot about the significance of Africans in developing the European academic system, but I didn't know where, this, where was the evidence. I want to see it distinctly. I want to see it in the, I want to see it in the Latin. I want to see it in the medieval. I want to see the documents. So I started having documents sent from the University of, M of Madrid, a place called the Instituto de Arias in Spain. I had things sent from California. And reading through this information, I had roles, curriculum roles. In other words, what was taught at particular universities at particular points in time. I checked the listings of who, the te who were the teachers at particular uh, colleges and universities. Why was a particular university established? What was its charter? What was its creed? When I started finding out that the, the major schools of Europe, the ones that are now considered the cornerstones of European intelligentsia and academia, Oxford, University of Paris, University of Naples, Bologna, University of Palencia in Spain, Salamanca, all these places had as their charted purpose the study of the Moorish texts. They had set up these schools to make use of the information that was coming in. They were not cathedral, they were not all what's called cathedral schools. Cathedral school you went to only to study Christianity, Catholicism. These schools were developing to study the sciences and the philosophy that the Moors had been introducing in Andalus. And when you look and you see names like Adam de Marisco on the on the um, faculty role for Oxford University in the 11th, excuse me, in the 12th century, it might pass you by unless you know what de marisco means. De marisco means of the Moors. Adam of the Moors. Hence, many names, in fact, that people had in those days, you either said where you came from in terms of regionally or who you came from in terms of blood. Hence, the name Moor that so many Europeans carry today and don't know what they carry. <laughs> if they knew, if they look, look at one of their, in their books of heraldry, they'd probably pass out to see what's there. In fact, and I'll show those, some of the, the examples a little bit later. So these are things that were necessary, getting these texts and getting these curriculum roles to see for myself. And I have to say, my, my advisors who were all Europeans, University of Pennsylvania, uh, Columbia University, doctorate uh, in history, all Europeans were shocked. They were like, well, you know, how did you get this information? How would you, why would you even think to look for such information? But they couldn't, as I say, they couldn't touch it. They still had to get, say, give me the grade because the work was thorough. But uh, to this day, I'll never forget the face of one of my professors when I came in with um, some of these documents in the medieval Spanish sent from Spain. He just sat there, just kind of shaking. Like he had put uh, uh, well I see you've really done your work. So I mean this is something obviously that's required. We need to as I as I tell uh, it's our responsibility as doctoral students is we have to teach undergraduates and I say we need an army of scholars. Definitely do the research, do the work, learn another language, and if you can, travel and engage. If you meet people from different places, everything will give you leads. I go through life as a detective. I go through life as a detective. I listen to language, I look at uh, linguistics and etymology, I listen to myth, putting it all together to try to understand what has come to pass, because these people have pulled so much wool over our eyes that it takes more than one, one hand, a disciplinary hand to pull it up. We need to take different disciplines as well to pull that wool off. So I mean, this is something that, uh, in fact, you'll find some historians will actually negate. I had a, a one professor tell me when I was talking about the African presence in the Americas, in Mexico, and I was talking about the evidence in linguistics, and the evidence in religious practices, and the evidence in myth, and the evidence from documented accounts given by Spanish explorers. He told me, you're just grabbing up everything from everywhere. That's not, that's the, myth is not acceptable. That's not acceptable. Linguistics, that's you're out of your discipline. I said, if I came into a courtroom bringing one witness, 
to establish a case and to say, look, um, so-and-so didn't, didn't commit the crime, and here's my one witness to tell you why. And my, my opponent comes in, he's got eight witnesses, wiretaps, uh, artifacts, and everything else, and lays it out. Who's going to build a better case? Ironically, that's why the foundation of law is history, because it's teaching you how to pull it all together. But yet when it comes down to it, in the world of historiography, or historicity, when you present this information to a European historian, they say, no, no, see, because you, you, didn't, you didn't give it as we put it, see? <laughs> just, just read these authors. That's it. And don't start, don't start reasoning. I don't want to hear any analysis now. And when I did this in the presence of a, of a historian from Mexico, this man who was a Mexican is telling me, you're right. Telling me, oh, abso absolutely, absolutely. And this European-American, Jewish fellow, <laughs> European Jewish fellow, Ashkenazim, <laughs> is sitting there saying, no, no, I've never heard that. Everybody can claim being in America. And this Mexican historian standing there telling him, yes, there is an African presence. You can go to Veracruz and see it. <laughs> There's a tradition that you can find about Yanga in the tradition of Mexico. You see the Olmec heads. I mean, what more do you, I mean, this man is from Mexico. He grew up there, and this European American is telling him, you don't know what you're doing. No, you're wrong. I mean, the arrogance is something else that's intriguing. The level of arrogance they would feel comfortable with doing this. 